Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So guys, this one is not going to be lengthy because I don't necessarily feel all that well. Um, but I've been chomping at the bit to get to this very specific story. Let me check my audio and let's dive into it because it is awesome. It is remarkably embarrassing for a Democratic Party who's been screaming at the top of their lungs that they're united and they want people to run in those races and all this other stuff. And Yeah, 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 yeah. It sounds nice. That's what your mouth says. What do you say behind the scenes when nobody is looking? What do you have to tell? What do you consider to be these lefties who are running in your races behind the scenes when nobody's looking, when there's no camera on you, when there's nobody, you know, putting a, a microphone in your face? What are you telling these lefties? What are you telling these progressives? Steny Hoyer, the number two Democrat in the House of Representatives, has been caught with his hand in a proverbial cookie jar. What I mean by that is, one of the candidates who was running in the race, a lefty, a Democrat, Steny Hoyer, impressed upon him that he should leave the race. He impressed upon him in no uncertain terms. He impressed upon him in his flat, fat words. A tape. I'm going to let play the tape for you, for, for yourself. But he got across to him that, look, we have a particular point of view. And in having this point of view, there are certain people who we've decided who we prefer to run. It's not personal, quote unquote. It's not personal. This is just our choice. I'm going to play the tape. I'm going to play the audio. I'm going to read a little bit from it, from the article itself. And I would like to revisit the argument of solidarity of no. Because some goofball wrote an article yesterday, and I don't mean to disparage him, but I mean, it, it, in light of this, it makes it more ridiculous that Bernie Sanders has conquered the Democratic Party, that Bernie Sanders is standing triumphant with his staff in hand like he's a Spartan warrior, and his chest plate gleaming in the sun, his golden chest plate, and him standing on the throat of the Democratic Party. Nonsense. Utter and complete nonsense. And to make it more so nonsense, you have a tape with the lead Democrat telling a progressive candidate, get out the race. It's not personal. It's not personal at all. We don't even necessarily know who this person is. We don't know his values. We have certain criteria. And you don't meet it. Sorry, buddy. Steny Hoyer, top Democrat. And it's not just Steny Hoyer, apparently. He kind of made this point that this is something that's just done. And this... It's not a bombshell in the sense that, oh my God, I can't believe this takes place. It's a bombshell in the sense of you get to hear what's taking place behind the scenes when Democrats are not in front of a camera and they're deciding that they want to muscle certain lefty candidates out of the race because they don't want that person to run against their establishment choice. Fucking awesome. Fucking awesome. Let's take a look at the article real quick and then we can go through the tape. This is the Intercept. The Intercept has been on the ball. Secretly tape audio reveals Democratic leadership pressuring progressives to leave race. Well, that's interesting. Steny Hoyer, the number two Democrat in the House of Representatives, has for years been the prolific campaigner on behalf of current and potential members of Congress. It was no surprise then that December found him in Colorado, where the party has hopes of knocking off Republican incumbent Mike Kaufman. Before Donald Trump had even been inaugurated, local resistance groups being delug began deluging Kaufman's public appearances, pressuring him not to repeal the Affordable Care Act and putting him back on his political heels. Levi Tillerman, author, inventor, and former official with the Obama administration's Energy Department, moved back home to make a run against Kaufman. Schoolboy politics. I want to run in this election. I think we could take this Republican out. Schoolboy politics, democratic politics, representative government, who knew? He focused a campaign on clean elections, combating climate change, Medicare for all, free community college, and confronting economic inequality and monopoly power. Another candidate for the nomination, Jason Crow, a corporate lawyer in powerhouse Colorado from Holland and Hart, and an army veteran, meanwhile, appeared to have the backing of the democratic establishment, though it wasn't explicit. In November, it became clearer as Crow was named by the Democratic Congressional Com Campaign Committee to the party's red to blue list, which committee specifies is not an endorsement, but does carry symbolic weight. I love this. They have a list that they want to convert people from red to blue. And they're like, look, just because we, the Democratic Party, created this list, and just because we, the Democratic Party, who created this list, put somebody on this list, that is not an endorsement. That is not an endorsement. It's something else. 
then what is it? You, the Democratic Party, created the list. You, the Democratic Party, is looking to convert voters in this way. You have control of all of this, and yet you put somebody's name on it. How on earth is that not an endorsement? Let's keep going. It is an endorsement. That's my point. With Hoyer in Denver, Tillerman met the minority whip at a Houston-Denver downtown to make the case that the party should stay neutral in the primary and that he had more plausible path to victory than the same centrism that Kaufman had already repeatedly beaten. So Levi is saying, look, I'm going to go meet this guy. I'm going to go meet um, Hoyer. And I'm going to have a conversation with Hoyer. Now, in having this conversation, his, his point was, stay out of it. Let the democratic process take effect. If your guy wins, then your guy wins. If I win, then I win. But you should be neutral in this process and support the winner of the process. Stay out of it. Be neutral. You said you've wanted these people to run. Well, I'm running. Be neutral. What he got back was not neutrality. In fact, he got a, somewhat of a dressing down. Let's take a look at this. We'll take a look at the audio. Listen to the audio. Hoyer, however, had his own message he wanted to convey. Tillerman should drop out. In a frank and wine raging conversation, Hoyer laid down the law for Tillerman. The decision, Tillerman was told, had been made long before, long ago. It wasn't personal, Hoyer insisted, and there was nothing un uniquely unfair about what's being done to Tillerman, he explained. This is how the party does it everywhere. Think about that. And he's right, by the way. We've seen it with our own eyes. The Democratic National Committee and the DCCC have been attacking lefties all throughout the United States. Let's say DCCC, because DCCC is the one uniquely suited for this kind of congressional races. They've been putting their money behind certain candidates in the primaries. Think of what's taking place here. The people themselves haven't even made their choice on who they wanted. And the Democratic Party is saying we have a workable point of view that we would like to enact and keep going and persist in our election process. So... We, the DCCC, will make the choice on who we want to put our money behind in these races. Fuck what the public wants. Fuck what the public wants. Let's keep going, and I'm going to let you listen to the audio after, after this. Tillerman had heard the argument before from D.C. insiders and local Democratic bigwigs, all of whom had discouraged him from challenging the established favorite. The only difference was that for the first com for this conversation, the candidate had his phone set to record. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And these other conversations that we've had, I haven't been able to actually put my hand on it. But in this conversation, I got sick of them explaining to me one thing while at the same token saying something different when they went in public. That's where this came from. He got pissed off. These guys are glad handing me when we're in public and pretending as if we're all united and all this other stuff. But behind the scenes, they're telling me to drop out. He got pissed off. There was a disparity between what was being said in public versus what was being said in private. And he wanted to bring light and shed light on that disparity. Let's keep going. I love this. This is awesome. The Secret Tapes audio recordings released here for the first time reveals how senior Democratic officials have worked to crush competitive primaries and steer political resources, money, and other support to hand-pick candidates in key races across the country long before the public announces its preference. Long before the party publicly announces its preference. The invisible assistance boosts the preferred candidate in fundraising and endorsements, and then the fundraising success and those endorsements are used to justify the National Party support. Meanwhile, the opponents of the party unspoken pick are driven into paranoia, wondering if they merely imagining the unseen hand that's working against them. Again, understand what's being said. It's like the party itself has its preferences on who the party wants. Because the party has its preferences on who the party wants, the public party doesn't tell people that it's their preference. The party just kind of works behind the scenes. The person themselves that are in the races are thinking to themselves, am I crazy? Or did the party just put his thumb on a scale for a particular candidate? No, you're not crazy. The party was putting its thumb on a scale for a particular candidate. It has nothing to do with the public itself. It has everything to do with the point of view that the party wants to persist. Let's keep going. I love this. This makes my point entirely you know, for the solidarity of no. Come on. There we go. Hoyer bluntly told Tillerman that it wasn't his imagination and that mobilizing support for one Democratic candidate over another in a primary isn't unusual. Representative Ben Ray 
Lujan, Democrat from New Mexico, chair of the DCCC, has a policy that early on we try to agree on a candidate who we thought would win the general and give that candidate all the help we could give them. Hoyer told Tillerman, matter of factly, it's nothing to do with the public wants. It has everything to do with what we decide as the Democratic Party. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing, by the way. They've been putting their thumb on a scale all over the place, but not necessarily wanting to admit that they've been putting their thumb on a scale. Okay, fair enough. You don't have to admit it. We caught you on tape. You've been caught on tape. Let's play the tape because I think you get my point in regards to what's being said. So this is the intercept. Hoyer pressuring one of the lefty candidates to get out of the race and not just pressuring them to get out of the race, saying that, look, this is just what takes place. This is how we do it. This is just politics. No offense. Nothing personal. We just need you to go away. And by the way, please don't attack the Democrat once you go away. Levi, I want, obviously I want to talk to you about this congressional race. Absolutely. That's what I expected. Yeah. You would like me to get out of the race. You keep saying I would like you to get out. And of course, that's, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. I know you're fundraising for Crow. Yeah. You know? I'm for Crow. I am for Crow because the judgment was made very early on. I didn't participate in the decision. So your position is a decision was made, you know, very early on before voters had a say. That's fine because that's the DCCC knows better than the voters of the 6th Congressional District, and we should line up behind that candidate. That's certainly a consequence of our decision. There are two things I'd like you to consider. One may be easier than that. The first would be, uh, if you stay in the race, mm -hmm. frankly, I would hope you would not. I'll get to that. But if you stay in the race, it is not useful to the objective to tear down Crow. Mm -hmm. Crow's clearly the favorite. That doesn't mean he win. Just means he's the favorite. I hear you. That doesn't mean it's right. Just means no. no, I hear you. Right. I don't know Crow well, but I think he's a decent human being. So before we before we go any further on that, Crow is the favorite. N in no small part, Congressman Hoyer, because the DCCC not only put its finger on the scale, but started jumping on the scale very early on. And I'm born and raised a Democrat. I mean, it's undemocratic to have a small elite select someone and then try to rig the primary against the other people running. And that is, that is basically what's been happening. I hear you, and I disagree. But you were part of that process Absolutely. as well. You said absolute. <laughs> I love that, I love that, I love that. He's asking him specifically, like, detailing the failure and the fraud involved in the process. Detailing it. And he said, you are part of rigging this. Oh, I disagree with that. No, 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 sir. You've just said that you were part of, of this process of choosing the person. You don't even know who the person is. You don't even necessarily know the politics of the corporatists that's being put in that, who they're pushing. You don't even know. And he says, absolutely. Yes, we're part of the rigging of the process early on. Yes, this guy, can you imagine having this conversation? You're running an election. The Democratic Party is saying these elections are fair. These elections are honest. Yeah, there's no issue with this election. While at the same token, having this guy, the number two representative of Democrat, being frank with you, saying, look, we need you to get out the race. And we don't want you to hurt the person who we ourselves are putting our weight behind, the the, the, the the, the corporatists who's running in our seat. We need you to not do that. And he's saying, you guys are saying that he has a better chance, but the only reason he has a better chance is because you early on made your choice and then backed that choice with resources that you didn't necessarily give to the other people in the race and then said, look, this guy just seems to have a better chance. He has a better chance because you backed him early on and gave him resources that you didn't give the rest of the people who were running in the party. Hey. What about having the people in that district or in that area make the choice? What about that? What about democracy? 
Isn't that an interesting and special idea? What about a representative government? Meaning the people themselves making the choice on who they want to represent their interests. Now, if the Democratic Party wants to back that person afterwards, no issue. I think the party or the issue that this guy's getting at is, I've been a Democrat my entire life. You told me that, that we should run in this process. Obama came out saying people shouldn't run in the process if they need to change their politics. Donna Brazil came out on, on Tim Black's show. And instead of people dogging the party, man, people need to get involved to get into the party. This guy took you up on that offer. He took you up on that. He says, you know what? I'm going to run back and I'm going to run on clean energy and jobs. I'm going to run on what people want and what people want to vote for. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to my hometown in Colorado and I'm going to run for the Democratic Party because I want to change this world. I want to change this country. And Obama told me and Donald Brazil told me to do it. And then he gets there and he tries to run and he finds that he's being muscled out by a certain workable point of view in the Democratic Party that is backing these corporatist candidates. He's aghast by this. And he's so aghast by this, and he's realizing, wait a minute, there seems to be a distinction between what you are telling the public versus what you are telling me behind the scenes. And over and over again, I keep getting this impression that you don't want me in this race. Yes, that impression is correct, sir. That impression is correct. We don't want you in the race. But you've just raked the process. Oh, I disagree with that. No, you just told me that you've rigged the process. We're sitting fucking here. We're right here. I got ears. You just told me that you put your weight and money behind the people who you wanted in that process. Yes, absolutely. You just said absolutely. Well, well, yeah. I mean, I mean, come on. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. We rigged the process. They are doing this on state and local levels all throughout the country. Tell me again how Bernie Sanders has conquered the Democratic Party. Explain to me. Tell me. Yes. Yeah. I've been at this a long time. Yeah. Uh, when I said you need to get in strong, hard, and early, you disagree with me. Yeah. It's been happening. I hear you, and I disagree. The primary against the other people running, and that is that is basically what's been happening. I hear you, and I disagree. But you were part of that process Absolutely. as well. You said Absolutely. after. Yes. Yeah. I've been at this a long time. Yeah. Uh, when I said you need to get in strong, hard, and early, you just do it. You know, obviously, that's your choice. And you guys are shoveling money at him. I'm going to continue. You're going to. That has to be aggravating to hear. I mean, honestly, it has to be. He says, "We, I've been at this a long time. Yes, you've been corrupt for a very long time. I understand. Uh, we got to get in hard, strong, and early. Sounds almost so salacious sounding. It's like, oh, we got to get in hard, strong, and early. Yeah, you you are getting hard, strong, and early. But the problem with this is there are other candidates who are running in the Democratic Party, kind of like Bernie Sanders running in the Democratic Party. And you've decided to not wait for the public itself to make a choice on who the public wanted. You yourself made the choice. You, as a Democratic Party, has a certain workable point of view that goes with this idea of these corporatist narratives, this idea of people before or profits before people, this neoliberalism. Fair enough. That's your point of view. That's your steed. That's the person who you want to back. It's kind of corporatist. The problem with this is you're not allowing the public itself to make that choice. You, as a Democratic Party, are making the choice for them. You're putting money and resources behind certain people who you want. Again, not allowing the public to make their choice first. Nobody is taking issue with you that you're backing this guy Crow. They're taking issue that you didn't allow the public to choose him first before deciding to back this person. That's what the issue that the people are getting at. You seem to be weeding out and attacking a very specific demographic of candidates. Those people tending to be lefties. That's his point. That's his issue. Stenny. Let's keep going. I've been at this a long time. I bet you have. Continue to do it? We are going to continue to do it. The reason we are going to do it is because... A decision was made to focus, it was clear that was our policy and our hope that we could early on try to come to agreement on a candidate that we thought could win the general. They made a choice early on that they were going to pick the candidate who they thought could win the general. You know what's missing in this? The public. The public is missing in this conversation. Let's keep going. Mm -hmm. And the good 
back then with all the help we could give them so that we would have a unified effort going into a general election. Which, which means, effectively, Congressman Hoyer, I'm running a campaign against Crow and against you and against the DCCC because you guys are on Crow's side. Yeah. You know, frankly, that happens in life all the time. He said, frankly, that just happens in life all the time. I mean, essentially, shit happens. Sorry. Look, I, I feel like a come to Jesus argument it needs to be made. What I mean by this is there are some Democrats right now who believe that they can change the party. There's some lefties who believe that they can change the party, that the soul of the party is good, the heart of the party is good. Yeah, deep down, they're good. It's just these bad apples that are sometimes bubble up to the top. No, I'm sorry, guys. The problem is the party itself. Your, prob your party is problematic. It loses persistently. The moment that it gets in office, it starts to lose because people start seeing, oh my God, is this what we really voted for? I understand that there are some lefties who still vote Democrat. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. What I mean by that is the solidarity of no. You will get nothing accomplished under this model of the Democratic Party that you guys are persistently helping and assisting. You are the political equivalent of abused spouses. Whatever they do, it doesn't necessarily matter. You still end up voting Democrat. They can beat you. They can hit you. You can walk around with a black guy saying you stepped onto a pole or fell down an elevator shaft. They can, they can not wash their hands when you're making ham sandwiches for your mom. They can s have sex with the maid. I mean, I can go with a litany of things that they can do. And you still, at the end of the day, still continue to vote Hillary. Vote Hillary. Lefties, true blue lefties, still pushing this thing of voting Hillary. Under normal circumstances, they would probably be considered socialists and yet still vote Hillary. Thinking through some magical process that what they voted into office is really going to do or articulate anything that they actually want from the standpoint of policy. And completely missing this idea that because they're so complicit in supporting the Democratic Party, regardless of what they're doing, they are going after lefties. Literally going after lefties. They are putting the weight of the apparatus itself behind certain candidates against those other candidates. They are not even waiting for the democratic process to take its shape. Meaning, if this particular area chooses this guy and this guy is a lefty, putting your weight behind it after they choose. They're not even doing that. They're saying, we're going to get it long, hard, and strong, and we're going to vote our person early on, and we're going to just put our weight behind that person. Fuck whoever else is in the race. And fuck democracy and representative government. Because fact is, until you give the public an honest choice, the public may not want your corporate person. And, and to, to make that point clearer, the guy who they wanted, uh, this part. Let's see. They asked, right here. Crow spoke at the 2012 Democratic National Convention to support the repeal of the military's don't ask, don't tell policy. He previously served on the Colorado Board of Veterans Affairs and advised both the Obama administration and former Colorado Governor John Hickelloper on veterans issues. Crow's first television advertisement focused on Kaufman's support for the gun lobby. But conservatives have fired back to note that Crow's law firm lobbies against gun control on behalf of gun manufacturers in Colorado. That's what you get with a corporatist. Hypocrisy. And that hypocrisy is now being challenged and attacked by the Republican Party. That's awesome. Crow's work representing corporations accused of misconduct may become a liability in a campaign. No, it will become a liability. Legal filings list Crow's name on lawsuits defending payday lenders Western Sky Financial and fracking firm Slauson Exploration. Think about that. You have one guy who's running for environmental change and climate change and everything else. And the other guy is representing law firms that are defending payday lenders and fracking. 
Explain to me again how Bernie Sanders has conquered the Democratic Party. Explain to me. What it sounds like is their optics. They made them better liars, like I said before. It's one of those things of, yes, we can tote Sanders out, and few of us, or few of them, would take on those Sanders positions. But the majority and the party itself, just because you're saying one thing, doesn't necessarily mean they would ever try to enact those things. And if, I guarantee you, if you don't have anybody pushing to enact those things, those things would not get enacted. The party hasn't changed. The party has become better liars. The point I'm making to you is, this is the honest part of the party. It has a workable point of view. And you as a lefty is not going to change that point of view by being completely complicit and whatever that point of view goes with, meaning the whatever they go with from the standpoint of policy and law or support. I mean, come on. They're attacking your candidates. Still, do you stay with them? Like, I guess what I'm getting at, at which point do you leave? At which point do you say enough? I love Nina Turner to death, but again, I always ask the same question, at which point do you say enough? No, Mickey Kant, same question. At which point do you say enough? Tom Hartman, same question. At which point do you say enough? And if there is no point where you say enough, then it doesn't really matter. You're just a Democrat, and whatever they do, they essentially pass on. But I think that's important for your audience to know if there is no point where, they, where, where you would ever say enough. I mean, come on. You have these people sheepdogging people into the Democratic Party, and you're finding a situation where they're literally attacking lefty candidates they're doing the same thing that they did to sanders all throughout the united states at which point do you say enough and if there's not a point at which you say enough then can we just say you're just a democrat and at the let's be honest somewhat of a hack and that you would always essentially push for the democratic position i understand people will bitch and moan about the democratic position but if at the end of the day you'll still say vote hillary then what does it matter they are literally attacking lefty candidates they're literally pushing lefty candidates away now we knew this was taking place in some states but we find out that this is something that's taking place all across the united states they have a workable point of view that they're espousing throughout the united states that workable point of view is not lefty that workable point of view has nothing to do with lefty it has everything to do with using that particular cloak in order to sucker people into voting for them again at which point do you say enough which point do you say enough this is going longer than I want it, but let's see if somebody's here. Don't blame me. I voted for Kodos. No idea what that means. No idea what that means. Who's Kodos? Um, Vegan for the planet. Uh, let's see. James did the same. I don't know what that one is about. Some about Nader, too. The parties get their power from those that register in them and vote in their primaries. Register third party and take the power away. Registering independent has done it or will. Um, look, this is kind of my point in solidarity of no. It's not necessarily that there is a clear direction on what these people want to do. It's just that they clearly don't want to do this. It's like we're done in this. You've been attacking our candidates. You tell us that you want us to be a part of this political process. And clearly behind the scenes, you do not. Nothing changes. If you continue to do the same thing that you've always done. And I don't understand how continuously voting for somebody who's not representing your interests is going to somehow magically one day make it represent your interests. And yet this is what they're told and this is what's peddled. They are literally attacking your candidates. They are literally doing the exact same thing they did to Sanders all throughout the United States. They've been caught on tape doing this. Now if you're a lefty. And you were part of the process where they cheated Sanders the first time around, but you still said, okay, I need to vote for Hillary. Are you still on board with them doing the exact same thing all throughout the United States? And do you honestly believe that you voting for Hillary Clinton and giving them a pass on that is going to get them to change their ways? I think that's magical thinking personally, but I understand. Rob Lenore's just as democrats you've lost before starting think about yes yes the good, good fucking point rob i chastised you in the other video but god damn it you make a damn good point just as democrats we're boarding the ship we're boarding the ship we're gonna take back the democratic party and then every other day you hear him whining oh they're not allowing us to do this they're not giving us the list they're not giving us that crying continuously crying you see people like Zogby, who, and no problem with Zogby at all, complaining on Twitter, whining 
incessant whining. Oh, the Democrats aren't allowing us to do that. Blah, 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 blah. I'm sick of the whining. You're being attacked all throughout the United States. They're attacking lefties all throughout the United States and the things that they're doing. Do something about it. Stop whining to me. If you have a campaign and you're running in a campaign, make, make the decision to keep that campaign going and run as a third party. I don't care if it helps and makes them lose. That's the point. The point is to show your teeth, not to continuously say, okay, and be complicit in it. Imagine a situation of a crack addicted um, cocaine addict and the wife who's always complicit, always there. He slaps her. Oh, he didn't mean it. He was in a fit of rage. He beats the kids. Oh, he didn't mean it. He was in a fit of rage. He has sex with the maid. Oh, he didn't mean it. He was in a crack rage or whatever. Whatever the excuses that are used for this. You try to explain your blackout way to your friends. You try to do all that stuff. You try to make all the excuses in the world. The fact is, the fact that you stay is to some degree enabling him to be that way. Meaning that horrible fucking monster that you live with daily is somehow emboldened by the fact that you stay there allowing him to be a horrible fucking monster. I'm making the point that the politically abused spouse that is the lefties in the Democratic Party, until you withdraw your support from that, Nothing changes. The fact that you support it allows it to persist in the way that it persists. I understand that mean potentially a Republican may win, but so what? These parties have become so close together that many of the policies that you're getting, I, I, can you really create a distinction in the war policy between the two parties? Do you honestly believe that a Hillary Clinton would have been better within regards to the foreign policy and than Donald Trump? The answer is no. She would have been further in Wisconsin, Syria. I mean, you can go down the list on this stuff where they've become so close to one another. Donald Trump was talking about increasing the minimum wage to 10 bucks. Hillary Clinton was talking about 12. I mean, come on. I'm not saying they're, they're the same. I would never say that. There are differences. But I'm making the point that as long as you support the party, you will never get anything that you want. They can exploit those differences, the minutia between those two things, the incrementalism between those two things. They can exploit that for this kind of political gain. But the fact is, exploiting that for the political gain allows it to stay the way it is. They like Republicans being batshit crazy because they can exploit the fact that they're batshit crazy to stay essentially conservatives themselves. Nothing changes as long as you continue to support them in the way that they're doing. And right now, this argument for politics, well, your argument for politics is just going out the window. They've been attacking your candidates before the process has even started, meaning they had a point of view in their head that they wanted to espouse across the world. And it wasn't you. It wasn't yours. Those was justice Democrats. I understand. I understand. But you've been attacked before the thing has even started. Joshua Rensall, nothing changes until we write in progressive voice on how that ballots. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. I completely... Man, that's that was like a bomb. Like I, I, I read it, read it. It's like, yeah, nothing changes until right, right. We write in progressive. It is a voice behind. Oh, like oh fuck, that's hilarious. Sir bikes a lot day. When all but bad ideas are exhausted, it is when we finally get to the solution. We haven't gotten there yet, and I think we have a lot. Uh, I think we have another ten years left. Oh geez, that's sad. Essentially, you're saying when we hit rock bottom, that's when it changes. And we're not at rock bottom yet. Devastating. <laughs> that's devastating. Like, that's that's so dark. Like, I, I don't know if people realize how dark that is. Like, you have some people in climate change are saying you have 10 years left for the human species. Well, if you're talking about not resolving this shit for another 10 years, and I don't even know if we resolve it in 10 years. I don't think it resolves in 10 years. I think it resolves in 10 years if we end up in some kind of third world war and all shit falls apart. Maybe, maybe if people start being adults. But I'm skeptical it's going to be in 10 years. And I'm skeptical about the 10 year mark. Yeah, that's dark and terrifying. That's extremely dark and terrifying. And by the way, guys, thank you very much. Rob, um, Joshua Renshaw, John Renshaw, Joshua Renshaw, I'm sorry, and Sir Bikes a lot day. Guys, thank you very much. The super chat always helps. I, I, I try to make this show into a part-time gig. And so I always say thank you when people give me stuff. It's like my mama said thank you when people give you stuff. They have known this was an issue since then, Dax Jacobson. 
Yeah, but they've always just complained and bitched and moan about it. They've never had any power to do anything else about it. The idea that you're getting this guy openly saying this behind the scenes is amazing. The idea that this is a second, you know, second from the top Democrat is even that much more amazing. It's like he was being candid with them, and that candidness. I wish they were that candid with their voters. I wish they were that candid with their voters. Bite your ego and let Bernie Sanders inside DNC. Got to push to get sponsor enabled on your chat channel, Jamal. I don't know what that means. Got to push to get sponsor, hashtag, quote unquote, sponsor enabled on your chat channel. Jamal, interview Eleanor Goldfield, propaganda. I've interviewed Eleanor Goldfield, actually. She's been on the channel. It was months ago. How do you feel about ranked choice voting? Laura get it. I love ranked choice voting. Like, so, Vermont, if I'm not mistaken, Vermont has passed ranked choice voting um, against the will of their leaders, by the way. Meaning, if Vermont passed this in a referendum, this is what they wanted. Clear, perfectly clear, this is what they want. The political leader says, oh, we don't like this very much because they understand that that would allow them to get those people out of their seats. You always have this idea of the esoteric other. I call it the esoteric other. It's this, it's like, I would vote third party if I thought other people would vote third party. So if in your head you thought there was enough of a vote for third party to be dangerous, you would vote for third party. I like everything that they say, but enough people aren't going to do this. So your conception of the world has come up with what does the world look like? Who is the world going to vote for? Now imagine the ridiculousness of, of this. You may have 20% of the population that would vote for that third party candidate, but instead you end up with 1% of the population voting for it because in their heads, there's not going to be enough people to vote for this person. So the third party is punished just by virtue of being a third party. Everybody else grows up in their heads of two parties. I would vote for this other party if I thought this party had a chance of winning. You're penalizing the other party. The country may need the third party. The country may want that third party, but you still end up with this situation, this dominance of the two parties. Even though they've lost all support, all legitimacy, you still end up with these two parties because these people are terrified that other people won't back them up in their vote. That if they vote for Jill Stein or if they vote for this third party candidate, that the other public won't also do it. Like I said, you have 20% of the population that thinks that. You have 30% of the population that thinks that. Imagine taking that burden off. Meaning, imagine getting rid of this idea of least worse and least worse as a political strategy. Imagine taking it off the table. And in this case, you don't have least worse. You have, this is the person that I want. That person, that person, that's who I want. And you realize that you're not going to be penalized for that vote because if you don't get that person, you can always say, all right, here's my fallback person. The person who I don't really want, but at the very least, I think he's a little bit better than the other person. You decapitate the motto that they use for this kind of least worse scenario voting that the Democratic Party used. I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love the fact that Vermont did it. I love the fact that Vermont passed the referendum and then voted them down again when it, people, they tried to slow walk implementing um, um, ranked choice voting. No, I love it. I love it. it. It should just be the model of voting. It should definitely be the model of voting. And by the way, also, um, paper ballots. Now, the ranked choice voted makes the paper ballots a little bit more complicated. But still, even if it takes a little bit more time for your elections, get, to, get them right. Get them right. It's only democracy. The owners of the Democratic Party do not want ranked choice voting. Harold Hedge, no, they don't because it messes with their business model. How can you be least worse if you take that off the ballot? Imagine it for the moment. You go in to make your vote and you say, Ugh, I would prefer a third party candidate. But, but, I can't take the chance that a maniac wins the office. Now, right off the bat, just that conversation with yourself, I can't take the chance that a maniac wins the office, means you fell into the democratic trap. And the fact is, it's a trap not because it's not completely untrue. What they're saying is somewhat true. Don't think Donald Trump is a maniac. We've had other maniacs in those offices. We've had other racists in, those, in the office before. I do think he's a maniac. I don't necessarily think that's completely played up. I think on some stuff, he's less hawkish than the other party. But imagine for the moment if that threat goes away. Like this idea of, oh my God, this man's a maniac. I can't take him in. But you could say, all right, I do want this third party person. But if that third party person doesn't make it, I want this person. That, that is an amazing tool for the voting public. 
That is an amazing tool for the public. Joshua Renshaw, I would like to see you cover Michael Allen's run in California, 52nd on Direct Democracy Platform, and get your thoughts on supporting a Republican. That's interesting. I've come across that guy. Uh, uh, where's the worst name? Michael Allen. So, somebody has mentioned this. I don't know who mentioned it, and I don't know why I even know who this person is. Um, I don't know why I know who this person is, but yeah, I, I know, I've, I've heard, I've come across this. A Republican running on a direct democracy platform. Um, I don't know all of the details with it, of the direct democracy thing. Here's the thing, I mean, is that really what you want? Do you really want a direct democracy? Do you really want each and everything put up for a vote? And maybe I, I'm misunderstanding what direct democracy is in this case. But I will check him out, Joshua. I'll check him out. You're not, the, you're not the first person to mention him. Somebody else mentioned him. I just don't know where. I don't remember where this got mentioned. All right. So this has gone 41 minutes. Um, I'm going to end this here. Like I said, I'm so tired. Don't feel well. So, guys, thank you very much for everyone who supports the channel. Joshua Renshaw, Rob Illinois, Laura Ginnett. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. And again, all of the people, if you share, like, again, even if you disagree with me, it's not, it's not, the disagreement is not the big deal, I don't think. If you give me the benefit of the doubt, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, I'm going to end this here. If you guys enjoy the content, please feel free to share, like, subscribe, and of course, you guys can always support through Patreon. Thanks, everyone.